Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Of course, this is the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, we thank you for your patience while we're moving in. It is a great space here. Now, we uh, every Monday, Tom has uh, Steve Rhodes on the Tom O'Brien Show. Now, Steve has a fantastic newsletter that is Mastering Probability. And now I've spoken about it before, but it is so thorough. There is a lot of stuff to digest in it which if you're that kind of reader and that kind of investor, you need to get this. Now, if you've never tried it before, which I really recommend because everything here we have at TFNN has a 30-day money-back guarantee. For whatever reason, it doesn't work out for you. Uh, but I always bet that it does uh, for our clients. Um, this one is one you've got to check out. Steve, how are you doing? Hey, Jacob, I'm doing great. Yourself? Doing all right. We're just talking about how good this Mastering Probability newsletter is, telling people they've got to check it out if they haven't yet. Um, Steve, I always like what you got to talk about on Mondays. I don't always fill it in on Mondays, but when I do, I think it's great because I always learn a lot from uh, your kind of demonstrations on here. What are, you, what are we taking a look at today? Well, you know, today I'd like to do is take a look at Goldilocks. So um, we may be, I believe that we are in the early stages of the next major bull market in uh, in gold and and I'll tell you how I've come to that conclusion first I'm going back to uh, September of 1976 so Jacob the very first time that I invested in coins was when I was uh, 13 years old I used to have a uh, lawnmower a, a mowing service which basically just meant I did about six different neighbors in my uh, in my neighborhood and what was great was uh, I, I made enough money to go out and get a nice lawnmower. Then when I had that lawnmower, there were a bunch of uh, coin shows at the different malls. And so my dad took me up there and I started investing in some coins. Then when I was 19, 20, 20 years old, 20, 21 years old was the first time that I actually bought some gold. And it was uh, during this and it was during this run from 1976 up to the highs in 1980. Now I was no technician or anything like that. I assumed gold was going to go to the moon out there and I was even buying gold when it was in the um, close to 800 bucks, which was basically I bought nearly I pretty much nearly bought the high. But when I take a look now, having all this knowledge of technical patterns and so forth, and I go back and I take a look at gold's run from 1976 to 1980, which was a 760% rally. Pretty nice rally, huh? And, Absolutely. Uh, the, so some of the patterns that I use, one of the patterns I use to help us identify a bottom, I refer to as the Rhodes-Mintum indicator. And back in September of 1976, that bottom pattern was uh, confirmed. Now, on this chart, the black digits are consecutive moves higher, consecutive closes higher is what I should say. And uh, the red digits are consecutive moves lower. And the interesting thing about this tool is kind of, I didn't even realize it until, until I applied this. I used this tool for something else, but I applied it to start trying to understand, I guess, what I'll call the dance steps of the market. You go, you know, four steps back, up, two steps back, and so forth. Well, here, what we can see is there was one three bar, one three month consecutive decline. After that, we didn't see, we only saw one one month decline. So I'm just using that going back to the 1976 time frame. If we fast forward to 2001, the next time we saw the next major run, which is about a 200% uh, about rally in gold, this takes us back to August of 2000. And one rallied all the way into August of 2011 out there. And what you'll start seeing, so we've got that, we, we had a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom that formed in August of 2001. All of the other retracements or pullbacks, as we can see, were, two, were, were no more than two consecutive months to the downside. And that lasted all the way up through the highs in August of uh, 2011. So just want people to have that perspective. Now we take a look at coming forward to February of this year, February of 2024. And by the way, folks, the time frame that we're looking at is a monthly time frame. So we've got a bigger picture out here. Well, the last two bar rally that we had was uh, was in February of 2024. And uh, so I am thinking right now, the way that gold is trading is that we are in the next major um, bull run inside of uh, gold. If we take a look at now, what I had anticipated um, was that we were going to see a two month decline. And I'm going to go into that. So first, if we take a look at uh, this chart here is a monthly chart again for gold. And if we take a look at one of the other patterns that I use to identify tops and bottoms is referred to as the TD9 um, uh, count out there. TD standing for Tom <coughs> DeMarc. This is one of the tools that he had created out here. We'll see the blue arrows identify TD9 count patterns out here. Uh, the last three 
not including the one that we're in right now, the last three help to identify significant tops and bottoms. Now, the month is not over, but two weeks from today, if uh, gold closes above, shoot, what's that number? 2537.70. If gold closes above that, it will negate that monthly TD9 count. And th when you when you negate a TD9 count pattern, in this case here, it would do it within two months time frame. It tells us about a strong upward momentum move that is underway for gold. So that's another reason to say, you know what, that February bottom was the uh, was perhaps the neck was was the major bottom signal for gold in its continued rally. So again, now it's possible that two weeks from today we close below twenty five thirty seven seventy. If we do that, then we got to come back to the tables, take a look at what the charts are saying. But this stage of the game, it doesn't look like that to me. So I think we are in full breakout mode, daily, weekly, and uh, monthly out there. And if we take a look at this chart here that's got the daily, the weekly, and then the monthly time frame, on Thursday of last week, a, a daily TD9 count pattern was broken. Then on Friday, we broke the weekly TD9 count top. So all of these charts are signaling to you and I that we should see a continued rally inside of uh, gold. Um, let me see. What else can I take a look at quickly here before we get off the air? Sure. Um, no, I don't want to really look at that. Uh so let's take a look at the seasonal pattern here. So if we look at the 56-year seasonal cycle, gold is in a very favorable time period. If you look to the bottom right-hand panel here, these bars, July, August, September, all blue bars, all green bars, so to speak. And uh, so we're in a favorable seasonal cycle. So we should continue to see gold rally. However, and there's uh, every now and then there's a however, here's a however. We are also in a presidential cycle term. And basically, gold has been rallying since the beginning of the year. Uh, if we take a look at the presidential cycle, which has 15 data points out there. This shows that we could actually get a top at the end of the month. So be on close um, lookout for any type of patterns that might be forming out there. So this is, this is the only concern that I would have with making that call. But even if we do get another top out there, um, what I would be looking for is a two-month pullback. If we ever get that, that could be the next major, major buy inside of what I believe is a major bull market move inside of Goldilocks. Fantastic. Steve, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Sounds great. Take care, Jacob. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.